isn't water cooling fun. Here's a water block unboxing and installation on a 15D. Let's do this. Welcome back to another episode of Chadrick's Tech. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend. This just showed up today. I had to jump on camera and uh, let's do some unboxing and have a good time here. This is uh, Alpha Cool Core 50 Series GPU for the Gigabyte 5090. But I did have to wait. I ordered this back in beginning of July and it finally showed up today. I uh, couldn't be more excited. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I just come up here and throw it on the camera and we're going to unbox this together. <clears throat> so I do have my uh, Gigabyte 5090. I went with the WinForce OC. Uh, pricing availability seemed to be the best bang for the buck. Prices are coming down now, so that's that's in everybody's favor, right? Um, one of the things that I'm debating <clears throat> is that I did pick up some Thermal Grizzly Putty Pro. I don't I spent the money on this and now I'm not so sure I'm going to use this as the test guinea pig for thermal putty. Although I do think that it would probably be a much better option than the thermal pads. I'm just used to working with thermal pads and I've put a lot of these blocks together. If you've been following along the channel, you see how many things I'm water cooling. Uh, this is going to be no exception. I would like to try some putty, <coughs> but I think... I don't know if I want to chance an over $2,000 card to say, did I get good contact or not with my memory modules and VRAM. But <clears throat> maybe I will <laughs> do it. But I do know that this uses that thermal paste slash putty, whatever their compound is. I'm going to probably have a big mess to clean up. Um, if I went with a different brand, I would be, you know, just changing pads to the thickness that I would need for the Alpha Cool product. But <clears throat> we're likely going to have a mess to clean up. Uh, I have to take my time, be very careful. Uh, this Alpha Cool uh, product showed up. It's 10293 RTX 5090 Gaming Windforce with Backplate. 10293. So let's go ahead and unbox this. <clears throat> we might tear into the card, start some cleanup. See if we can get this thing installed. It doesn't look like it's too difficult. I think a lot of my time is going to be um, cleaning up the card and making sure the surface is ready with no damage. Put the new pads on. I'm, I'm likely going to go with pads, see what the thermals are, and then maybe move to putty. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to use this as my very first foray into putty just in case I get something wrong. I don't know. I may change my mind, but hang with me here. Let's have some fun. Let's get this together. Okay, let's go ahead and unbox this Alpha Cool Core 10293 for the RTX 5090 Gaming and WinForce with a backplate. So, uh, my receipt. All right, it comes with packaging instructions. We'll probably read the instructions. <laughs> These blocks have performed really well. I've already installed one on um, a colleague's 5080, uh, an Asus Tough, and also on my other 5070 Ti, which is an excellent card. So you end up getting backplate. Here's the pre-cut pad for the backplate. Here's for the cooler side gives you some thermal paste spatula screws to take things apart and hardware to go ahead and put your plugs and route your water so pretty pretty standard stuff i do like the fact that they separate and pre-cut your pads for your cooler most of the companies that i've worked with with other cards with Bixky, um, what was the other brands that I've used? Bits Power. They give you a stack of thermal pads. You have to figure out what size goes where, cut them to fit, 
and spend a lot of time trying to trim and fitting and getting it right, which there's nothing wrong with that, but going the extra mile to make sure that you've got all the pieces pre-made, cut, and ready to install, boy, that's really, really nice. And they perform well, too. And this is a huge card. It's like uh, the Asus Tough that I installed. About the It's about the same size <clears throat> and it is because my first trial into this was the msi 5070 ti reference design that is the for the reference 5070 ti and 5080 it's the same die and the card is so much smaller the the board is so much smaller here we've got you know it's definitely smaller than having the triple fan design but um this is, these are so nice. I, I can't wait to install these. Yeah. Let's get busy. Let's, let's get this together. So it's a really nice card. It's, it's a very large form factor, but still trying to be a two and a half. It's really a three slot card, right? But I'm using two monitors. I'm using the one HDMI, one display port. And when you're taking this apart, there are about uh, six screws for the back plate and four screws for the uh, GPU die and the uh, tension bracket. And then you can see three smaller screws right there at the, the edge of the I.O. panel. There are three screws for the I.O. panel on the bottom side. And then there are four screws directly into the face of the I.O. panel. And then one additional larger screw into the PCB, onto the uh, side of the uh, GPU. The, you'll, you'll see that here in a second. But uh, yeah, so this is really nice card design. It wasn't difficult to take apart. Um, it was tedious to clean, really. So you've got... Um, these six screws here and I don't have to really change bits you just use a uh, smaller screwdriver bit it's just the single bit for the entire process not nearly as complicated as the founders edition cards that <laughs> use different torque bits and different size Phillip heads so this is pretty simple so you can see there are four screws just couldn't keep it there on camera so I went ahead and fast forward that a little bit for you and then there's one straight down there on the side that I'm about to take out that's for the other side of the IO panel and then I've got the four screws for the GPU die Oh, well, I guess I haven't taken those these three out yet. So, um, okay, so you got those three on the very back. Now, you go in a crisscross pattern. And I couldn't get the Don't Tamper With Me sticker to cooperate, so you just, like, punch right through it there. So go in a crisscross pattern, loosen it little by little by little so that it just doesn't spring off and, and hit you in the eye with a loose screw. That wouldn't be fun. So... <laughs> There we go, so we're almost loose. Now, with all of these screws out, we should be able to separate the card, the PCB from the cooler. Now, we still have the fans connected, and it looks like there was enough room to separate and then go ahead and get the fan connection squared away once you've separated the two pieces here. There we go. Easy does it. But you can see these aren't, this is not normal thermal pads. This is that gel or putty or whatever it is that uh, Gigabyte is saying they're using. Uh, it's a mess is what it is. But <laughs> this is what it took me so long to get this ready. Plus, anytime you're really messing with trying to get 
um, with the with the board and everything. Like I, I use multiple tools, and I tried to show you a, a, a picture of each of the tools that I used. Now the material that was here was a lot more firm than what was on the memory modules. I'm sure it's probably all the same material, just the way that it's aged or heat cycled already. Um, might be showing how it's going to wear in the long run but um, gently scraping the top of the memory modules and you can see how much is left over and really that's that's not the big deal it's trying to clean it up from in between the memory modules and the VRMs and everything that's gets scooched around but this is definitely going to be easier at this point in time to take it apart. Everything's fresh and clean. I can't imagine trying to clear away this hardened stuff, you know, two years down the road or whatever. <laughs> it would be a, a mess. But I'm trying to very gently use uh, isopropyl alcohol on top of Q-tips and being very gentle. Um, you know, I don't repair GPUs. So I'm not going to be able to resolder anything. I'm not going to be able to, uh, uh, at my current skill set, and I really don't want to lose any downtime with this card. So this is a very soft bristle brush. And it's, this is out of my uh, PC toolkit. Um, all of these tools that I'm using comes out of the uh, PC repair toolkit or screwdriver kit that I have. And the bristles were so light that it was just, it takes that many passes, just try to clean it up a little bit. But with, a, with the uh, glory of time and cutting, <laughs> I'm now ready to see what kind of mess we have on the back plate, anticipating the same amount, right? So I got myself all prepared for how much of a mess it's going to be on the back as well. And I think that's reasonable to go ahead and, and be ready to do the cooler side so there are five or six screws that hold the PCB down onto the back plate it's a metal back plate it's a quality cooler it really did well in and of itself it's never going to be as good as a water cooler right but it was a decent design whatever they're saying these fans this wind force design but nonetheless onward and upward. Now let's see what kind of mess we've got. I think we've got one more bolt there. There we go. To get the I.O. panel off. That's the other side. Alright. Let's see what we got. Nothing. Absolutely nothing on the back plate. Wasn't communicating no heat transfer to the metal back plate. I don't understand that design. Like, you paid a lot of money and you only had heat transfer on one side of the board. So, this is the, uh, the shipping spacers. And then I'm basically wiping it down with some isopropyl alcohol and laying out my uh, thermal pads. And then... What the instructions want you to do is on the cooler side, the cold plate side, is to take the uh, paper, the plastic, off both sides of the thermal pads and lay them out onto the block. And you're going to set the board down on top of the block. And when you're doing this, you try not to stretch or um, extend the pads any further because you'll change the thickness, right? So be gentle with the pads when you're taking the plastic off each side, um, it's, they're, they're a tedious thing. Now, obviously the thicker the pad is the easier it is to work with, but these were one millimeter pads on the front side and they're three millimeter on the back. Now this is Thermal Grizzly Duranot. And if you notice, this is not spreading worth a darn. It's very thick. Um, that applicator is all but worthless. So then you have to use a spatula, and I'll be honest, this is a mess. I didn't really want to show this, but hey, because I've done this a lot, and it looks like I'm a, such a noob at putting thermal paste on a die or something. 
but it, it's an absolute mess because you have to work this and work the material and work the material and, 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 and honestly just heat it up with working it and trying to smooth it out to a nice thin layer and then you're left with this mess <laughs> around the die which I took some time to also clean up but hey I'm letting you know exactly what you're in for if you use this product I'm sure that it, it does an excellent job at cooling but I was just dipping the brush into some alcohol here trying to clean up around the die a little bit more not to make it look so janky I know you'll never see it but I'm just trying to make sure there's nothing out of place here that's going to affect the cooling now uh, once you've got the the GPU die pasted it's easy enough to lay it over here and line up the holes and set it right down into place and I basically my hands are clean so I basically will just sort of take this into a gentle press slight wiggle a little bit I want to make sure that I got good contact from the paste in the cooler but I don't want to wiggle it a lot because I don't want to move the pads right so now on the back side there will be heat transfer <laughs> I can't believe there's nothing on the back side of this was it an oversight or other cards like this or this is really the way they ship them uh, so they with with the pads I'm line, I'm laying them out making sure I have everything in place and know where they all go I haven't taken the paper the plastic between off each side but you're gonna see exactly how you lay them out and then I will take the plastic off both sides and lay them out into place so um, there's just a few more here and then they they want one on the uh, 12 volt high power connector because everyone knows that gets hot all right so this is laying the final piece into place and then we will be ready for the back plate I'm a little shocked that there was nothing um, on the of those long vertical strips and now there 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 were some chips and then there was like bare PCB they probably couldn't lay the pads flat enough to get even heat transfer maybe thermal putty in that situation might actually be better heat transfer because it will you can you can pile it up on each side of the chips and get good heat transfer and then use less uh, if you guys are seeing where I'm going with it, on each side farther out there's long vertical runs that seems like it would be um, something of benefit there but I may test that in the future now this back plate was very difficult to get into place um, it took me two shots at this honestly uh, you can't see the, the the holes on the back plate are so thin that you can't really line them up easily before you go for setting it down into place and I missed the first time and it tries to pick up your pad so <laughs> again um, air in all my dirty laundry it took me a, a two shots at this but then as soon as you want to get them all started and, uh, and know that all the threads are starting to pull in and then I just sort of gently lay my hand on it and make sure I can compress the pads a little bit and gently press down and then that way it takes some of the stress off the threads so that you're not I mean these are tiny screws and you're going to cinch it down and then like I'm pushing a little bit just to have a little bit more tension so that I can uh, cinch up um, the uh, back plate and I have good contact there and then I'm just putting my plugs in so I'm getting ready for my water lines and so the way I set mine up you don't have to stagger them front and back they communicate straight through you just need to get your ins and outs and it's listed on the front right at the very top and uh, don't forget to plug your Christmas tree lights in. You paid, you paid a premium for Christmas tree lights. Make sure you get those. So with that, we're really close to being squared away. Isn't that beautiful? That's, that's going to look really nice. And I've worked a lot with my PC. There it is in place. It runs great. The performance data is on its way. Um, I've, I've done a lot of testing with my system. Hopefully I'm finished with this system and I'll just be doing testing with other things. So. Performance data coming. Stay safe. God bless.